All right. Forces and moments in machines. Once again. And today we will talk about balancing. Balancing is a very important topic. It has to do with when we have um, something that rotates. So, for example, on a rotor, you have a wheel of some kind. There are many videos on balancing. You can look at those. And this is supported on bearings over here. And over here, so there is a bearing here, a bearing here. And this thing is spinning. Then if there is an unbalance over here, then you will have heavy vibrations. And the vibrations are bigger for larger spin speeds. Okay? That's the first thing to note. Our analysis of balancing distinguishes between rigid rotors and flexible rotors. Flexible rotors are those that have a critical speed or a whirling speed um, below the spin speed. So what does that work? How does that work? What does that mean is I can have a rotor like this and I'm spinning it about this axis and then there is certain some speed where it sort of bows out and it's going round and round. So that's a whirling motion. And that happens at the first critical speed. And then later, if I spin it at a speed which is faster than first critical, then when I start this system, I'll have to cross the critical speed. And crossing it is difficult. So this situation, we refer to it as a situation with a flexible rotor because the flexibility or bending of the rotor has to be accounted for. We are not going to talk much about flexible rotors. We are going to talk about rigid rotors. Rigid rotors, what happens is there may be bearing compliance may be there. But the rotor is rigid. That's what rigid rotor means. When the rotor is rigid, our analysis proceeds like this. For analysis, so the rotor is a rigid body. The steady, the speed is steady. Now you understand that actually the rotor, the angular velocity may be changing with time, but our analysis is at a steady speed. We will neglect gravity for reasons that should be clear to you later. Um, they are not important. Um, because in any case, among other things, gravity is a zero frequency uh, phenomenon and the rotor is rotating at a high frequency but also bearing compliances will be not modeled so what we really do is we treat the bearings as rigid rotor as straight
and find bearing forces. So we basically imagine that there is a situation where the rotor can be balanced and then we think of the rotor as being shifted from that situation and we try to go back to that situation. Okay, so that's the next thing to know. Further, this is where you need to recall your rigid body dynamics. And in rigid body dynamics, suppose there is a rigid body, there are some coordinate system axes x, y, Z, this is an inertial frame. This body has a center of mass G and it has a moment of inertia tensor. Its angular momentum H is this tensor acting on its angular value. This angular momentum is about G. Okay, so this may have been formally done in your dynamics class. We will do it in a slightly shorter way and we will work with matrices. Of components. Okay, so now let us move back to the left side of the screen come here all right let's go back to yellow now this i c m the matrix of coefficients is like this i x x i y y i z z and then these are the off diagonal terms it's symmetric so we should write i y x but i will write i x y here and i y z and over here let me erase this a bit I, X, Z, I, Y, Z. So this is a symmetric matrix. Now, I, X, X is equal to the integral of Y square plus Z square dm over the body. Remember, this is the body. That's the center of mass. These are the coordinate axes x, y, z. Then if here in blue is a mass element, that mass element has a certain x coordinate, a certain y coordinate, and then a certain z coordinate. Right? So there is x, here is y, here is z. These are measured from the center of mass okay so this is the moment of inertia about the center of mass you will see uh, problems where some point is fixed on some body and a moment of inertia will be taken about that fixed point for my class don't do it okay so here are the diagonal elements i x x you can see has y and z similarly i y y will have x and z These are the diagonal terms. You will remember this from your dynamics class. And then finally, there will also be the off diagonal terms. So for example, I x y will be minus the integral over the body of x y dm, etc. 
this is why i x y and i y x are the same okay all right so now that we have this we have momentum balance so over here for example on this body if there are some forces one maybe some vector moment m1 maybe another moment m2 maybe another vector f2 right and this body has an angular velocity omega it has an angular acceleration alpha alpha is equal to d omega dt in the fixed frame okay all right in that case angular momentum balance for the body is the sum of moments about g the center of mass is equal to i cm alpha plus i have to pull this a little bit omega cross i cm omega right so um, this is from the dynamics class you need to know this now let us go back to our rotor you see for our analysis what we have said is steady speed that means alpha is equal to zero I am underlining zero because it is a vector. The angular acceleration is zero. What does that mean? I come here, you see, this means the sum of moments about g is equal to omega cross i c m omega. Okay? Now we will write this this part here using matrix notation like this this is i x x etc as we have seen and this is omega x omega y omega z the three components all right so that is how this icm omega is to be written however we will now choose our axis so here finally is our rotor let us say this is our rotor maybe it has something over there that's our rotor this is our bearing this is our bearing okay maybe this bearing is a maybe this bearing is b and what we will do here i will use different colors to help you identify I will say, sorry, actually I should use it from there. Um, imagine that this arrow is here. I should erase the lower one. Okay. So let us say this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and this is the set axis if the rotor is balanced then at steady speed if there is no reaction no friction in the bearings right so this is so as you can imagine this thing is rotating at some speed um, which is the positive side um, that's the positive side that's the positive side that's the positive side okay so this is rotating it has certain amount of energy gravity is being neglected so don't worry about gravity in that case no torque is needed so there is no external moment no moment like this that is driving it 
okay i will put it in red orange reddish okay i will say here n d t please don't misunderstand it means no driving torque okay no driving torque all right now over here balance is taken to mean no forces at bearings a and b okay very good if the center of mass of this rigid rotor is off the axis let us say it is at a distance of e okay if rotor center of mass g is not on axis then acceleration of center of mass is equal to omega square e towards axis and bearing reactions must be non-zero okay all right what is the meaning of this this means that this rotor therefore rotor cm must be on axis this is called static balance okay what this means is that under gravity the rotor will not spin and find a special equilibrium okay for example the static balance what does that mean it also means that x again measured from the center of mass right x dm is equal to zero y dm over the body b is body body is equal to zero and z dm we don't care about that is somewhere it's only on the axis so these two things are zero okay all right now we are beginning to get into more interesting territory so let us say this is the rotor we are treating it as rigid this point here is a this point here is b let us say that um, remember that this was x this was y and that was z okay so now let's show forces so over here let us say here is a force ax here is a force ay here is a force bx here is a force by we are not including moments from the bearings for the same reason that door hinges you know when i have a door frame when i have a door on a frame with a hinge here and a hinge here right the moments from the hinges are neglected because they are a very small extent this is a discussion that i normally have in a mechanics class which we don't have time for here so i'm going to skip this discussion and you can think about it and conclude that these moments are usually very small 
um, but you can also think of the bearings as thin or something and that's good enough so even if they are there they don't really mean much all we require is that the net moments should be zero no matter how you think about it we can proceed now by assuming there are no moments and you will get the same conditions for balancing of the rotor all right so let us remember our momentum balance equation linear momentum balance is f net is equal to mass times the acceleration of g g on axis once that is done linear momentum balance has nothing more to say it means that the sum of these forces is zero so this and this add up to zero and this and this add up to zero but they could be equal and opposite there could be moments and if they are equal and opposite and there are moments the bearings will still have loads there will still be vibrations um, failure may occur early vibration levels may be unpleasant or they may lead to large stresses and it may be generally undesirable so we will now think of angular momentum balance when we think of angular momentum balance then we say let us say that I, the center of mass g is somewhere on the axis so we will say now that the sum of moments about g is equal to omega cross icm omega all right now um, let us this is the spin of the rotor omega is equal to omega z k but we will just write it as omega k okay because there is no omega x and omega y all right so we will just write it like this now look at this part this part in terms of components is like this i x x i x y i x z and so on i x z i z z times zero zero omega all right and remember there's an element here which is i y z and there are other terms here there is something here and something here and something here but they won't matter to us because what we will get is i x z let me put an arrow here because from matrix notation i'm going to vector notation but i x z omega i plus i y z omega j plus i z z omega k all right and you see i have to take the cross product with something that is in the k direction so this term will drop out of that cross product and it will not cause moments it is these terms that will cause unbalance for this reason balancing of the rotor means that these terms must be zero the moment of inertia matrix can be like this but there must be zeros here this condition that those two must be zeros is called dynamic balance okay if they are not zeros even if the center of mass is on the axis of rotation when you spin it you will have forces in the bearings all right now when you see i x z and i y z as not zero you realize that these are off diagonal terms in the moment of inertia matrix 
But if we go back to the definition of what that moment of inertia tensor is, we will get some further insight. So let us do that now. So let me come here and take some yellow line again. And let us say here is x, here is y, here is z. And over here in blue, I have this rotor. This point is A. Here is the rotor. This point is B. And on this rotor, there is, in green, I will indicate that there is some mass that is symmetrically located. And because it is symmetrically located, it does not contribute to unbalance. And let us think about that mass which contributes to unbalance and think of that mass temporarily as being in the xz plane, just to sort of understand what is going on. So that mass is in the xz plane, it is somewhere here. Okay, So it has this distance, which we will call z, it has this height, which we will call x, and it has a little mass there, which we will call m. All other inertia is balanced, this is the only unbalanced, then the center of mass will be off the axis. So some other mass has to be there, which will cancel this to bring the center of mass back to the axis. Okay, so let that mass, we will, we will take care of it. We will put it somewhere at some other location. All right, but let us look at how much the center of mass has moved from this axis. You see, if, if I think of this as x1 and m1, then over here I have to think of this as x2 and m2 for the center of mass not to leave the axis in the x direction. What I want is m1 x1 plus m2 x2 equal to 0. Okay, So this is the static balance condition. We are assuming that the rotor is, rotor has static balance. So if there are unbalanced masses, they must satisfy this condition. Okay, so that is the first thing. Similarly, there may be unbalanced masses in the x direct y direction also. This mass itself may be in some other direction, but the principle will be clear if we just look at this x plane for the moment. Okay, now um, this is the first part. Static balance requires this, but now let us think about what these two point masses due to i x z. So what they do is i x z now is simply minus m1 x1 z1 because this height this is z1 and this is z2. Okay. From here this distance is z2. minus m2 x2 z2 okay this also must be zero this is zero for static balance this is zero for dynamic balance the interesting thing to note is that in this equation also, m1 multiplies x1 and m2 multiplies x2. In this equation also, m1 multiplies x1 and m2 multiplies x2. So, suppose this was 1 gram and this was 0 0.5 centimeter or this was 0 0.5 gram and this was 1 centimeter, the unbalance would be the same. Okay, So this is something to remember. This is why when you take your um, car tire, uh, you know, you buy a car tire at the dealer, what they will do is they will balance the, they'll put the tire on the wheel rim and they put some uh, little masses on the wheel rim. You will see that the radial location 
is uh, predetermined. That is because that is like fixing x. Doesn't matter because you have to match the product mx. You can fix x and adjust m. Or you can adjust fix m and adjust x. Or you can do both. So when we are doing balancing, when we are adding masses in the xz plane, we are interested in the product mx. I hope this much is clear to you. Okay, very good. Now let us come to this situation. Let us say that we have a rotor. So that is x, that is y, that is z. Okay. What we will do is we will pick two planes. Okay. So this is one plane with A and there will be another plane that point is B. Okay. So this rotor already because of its unbalance it has some there's the rotor there, right? So this rotor has some i x z not equal to zero, i y z not equal to zero. Okay. So now we this is unbalanced rotor. Okay. Now after balance. i x z let me say like this for new is equal to i y z equals zero this is what we have to achieve my point is that we can take any distance we like so let us say in the x direction over here we choose some distance let's call this our favorite distance, let's call this D. Okay. Similarly, in the Y direction, we will choose some other distance, which we, I'm sorry, an equal distance D in the other direction. So that is another D. In the plane B, we will have some D here and some D here. Okay. So, we will add one point mass here, which will be m a x. We will add another point mass here, which will be m a y. Over here, we will add m b x. And over here, we will add m b y we are planning to add four masses okay in two planes is that enough our point is it is always enough why because m a x d plus m b x d should be zero m a y d plus m b y d should be zero this is the requirement of static balancing okay now over here you see choice of coordinate axis is not so uh, important where is the origin laws of physics don't change that is why we can take z of a to be zero but we will we will see that soon enough doesn't matter so we will come here additionally we require oh wait a second i'm sorry i assume that it is already statically balanced let me clarify here so otherwise there'll be additional things to do 
already statically balanced. So only dynamic balance is being sought. Okay. So with with seeking dynamic balance, what we will do here additionally we will need I x y x z as received minus m a x d z a minus m b x d I have made a mistake. Um, apologies. This will be very, it is not a very significant mistake, but uh, it is a mistake. Let me, um, let me clarify what the mistake is. The mistake is, the center of mass already statically balanced so the center of mass g is somewhere on the axis we have to measure z from the axis for moment of inertia calculation right so this distance from here to here is minus z a and this distance from here to here to that plane is z b this is not origin as far as we are concerned that is the origin okay with that understanding these equations are correct so we will come here we will i x z is as received minus m a x d z a minus m b x d z b remember that z a and z b are chosen by us Okay, Be depending on where the center of mass is, we are measuring ZA and ZB from there. Some further clarification may occur or may not occur, but this is zero. Okay, that means we have dynamic balance. Similarly, I YZ minus M A Y D Z A minus m b y d z b is equal to zero okay now you see this is now we have achieved dynamic balance also we have achieved both but what is more important is that here we have two equations here we have two more equations we have a total of four equations and in these four equations our unknowns are max mbx may mby max mbx may mby these are as received this is what is i x z after adjustment and it is going to be zero and so we have four equations four unknowns you will ask we solve it and we can add those four masses we can do better than that but let us think of these four masses what happens if one of the masses is negative we come here and suppose this mass suppose this mass works out to be negative let me use red suppose this mass works out to be negative we just put it on the other side we put it there that means d effectively became minus d and m became positive you see equations will just be right there won't be any trouble okay so why is that because m times d is what is appearing in the equations you see we have d and m together d and m together if we change the sign of d then that is fine similarly 
we can also think of these as vectors and as we do examples we will see that so what happens is this is really like a vector you know if you if you think of this there is a way of thinking of m a x d i plus m b x d j no oh, that's not what i want i'm sorry that last part is not correct um m a y d j so this is the effect at plane a of mass at a is like this vector sum that vector appears in both places and they can be added and we will see this in exercises but this is enough for the first lecture thank you